Hello guys and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be looking at some of the not so smartest insults that I have seen about TJ Warren. Because like some of these don't even use any facts. Some of them are just accusations and some of them try to use facts but the facts they use are outdated. And they clearly haven't checked the statistics in a while. And they don't understand. So. First one. I will put it up here on the screen so you can see it. Because I screenshotted the um, thing. I'll keep it on for the entirety that I read it. I blanked out the names and stuff. So you guys can't hate on these people. Because I don't want anybody to go and hate on these guys. They've gotten enough of it. <laughs> there were people like me who responded to them, to them in these comment sections and told them, hey, you're an idiot. I'm just bringing this to my platform. These are off of Instagram. Some of these are responses to other people's uh, comments. Probably, but my hate for Warren goes above that. I think he meant to say deeper, but maybe he just got it mixed up. He thinking he built different like Braun but he ain't built different, he just applied some boost. First off, dude's 12th in the league in field goal percentage, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower. Um, so obviously he is built different if he can shoot very efficiently while averaging a good amount of points per game. So he is built different, and maybe not like LeBron, but... And then the applied some boost, I'm guessing he is accusing him of taking steroids. And the same could be said for LeBron. Like, last time I checked, I know this is a different sport, but all those baseball and football players who are staying good into their late 30s and putting up good stats were all on steroids. So, I, there's more evidence for LeBron being on steroids than TJ Warren being on steroids. Just saying. On to the next one. The same LeBron that said the scrimmages are like real games to him. Okay, lol. This was in response to somebody, because I feel like I need to give context to this one at least. This is in response to somebody that saying, saying that TJ Warren was playing good. And this is stupid because like, first off, we're not in the scrimmages. And second off, okay, because he said it, that means he's actually doing it. Last time I checked, OJ Simpson said he didn't kill anybody, and we're pretty sure he did. Last time I checked, at first, again, all of those players who said they were not using steroids in the 2000s for like the MLB and the NFL, last time I checked, they said they were not using steroids until they later admitted it, some of them, or to this day say they don't use them. Just because he says it doesn't mean it's happening. But I get, I, I know some of you bronze sexuals out there, you're just, you treat everything LeBron says as gospel. And you follow it to a T and you believe everything he says and you buy into the hype about him every single day. And anytime anybody tries to question his pure greatness, you see red. You don't think, you don't use any stats, and you're just, you just black out. On to the next one. Just four games. I hate to break it to you, but it's actually five games, not four. Like... And still, I know one of those games he didn't play good. But maybe that's why he's saying just four games is because he played good in four games. He did have one game against the Suns where he didn't play so good. About four games of scoring 30 points or higher. Like, that's not a just thing. Like, I get if it's just one or two games, but like after one or two games, like, it's starting to become a reoccurring thing. So... You gotta give it a bit of credit. At least a little bit. He went to the crossroads like, 
I on to the next one. He went to the crossroads like I don't want to be a bum anymore. Jimmy bullied me. I don't know if this one's really hate, but I feel like it's saying that you know TJ was a bum before all this happened, and he wasn't a bum. He was averaging eighteen points per game on a playoff team on good efficiency, actually great efficiency. So he wasn't a bum. I don't know why people keep on saying he's a bum. On to the next one. A few games in the bubble doesn't make him better than Jimmy Butler. He's had a great season, and he's a consistently good player. Warren had five good games. Um, I hate to break it to you, because I feel like you don't know this. Um, these games count towards their statistics, like their regular season statistics. So, yeah. Can you show this, the player comparison there? TJ Warren is very close to overtaking Jimmy Butler in every offensive and defensive category. Well, maybe not all. But he's very close to overtaking Jimmy Butler in some categories. And if Jimmy doesn't play, or when they do face each other on Monday, something tells me he will overtake Jimmy Butler in those categories. So, actually, uh, these five, soon to be six, good games uh, will make him better than Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler has not been a consistently good top player. Uh, last season, actually, with the Philadelphia uh, 76ers, he was only averaging 18 points per game. That's not a top player. So, yeah. So, there are multiple things wrong with this one. I don't know what drugs this guy was on. I mean, Miami, there's a lot of them. A lot of drug. There's a lot of drugs. On the next one. The last one. Just stop it. It's five games. It's not going to make him better than Jimmy. Show the stats. Show the stats. It's actually making him better than Jimmy very soon. I don't understand what crack... These people have done. And these are just some of them. There are more stupid comments out this like there. Like there are more stupid comments out there like these. In fact, there are probably some that are stupider. So I just got a few because I knew it would take a little bit and I didn't want to make a very long video. Just want to make more of a short one. But yeah, that is uh, a bunch of not-so-smart NBA fans trying to comment on why T.J. Warren isn't good. Like... I feel like some people don't realize... I know it took me a second to realize this, too. Because I know this feels like a completely different season. It feels like a new season, all new everything. But these stats are just based... These stats go towards their regular season averages. This is still the 2019 to 2020 season. So all of these go to their regular season stats. And right now, Jimmy Butler's regular season stats are staying stagnant, and in fact in a decline. Jimmy Butler was once averaging like 22, 23 points per game. He's now down to 20. And TJ Warren is up to 19. And if he keeps this going, Jimmy Butler is going to overtake him in points and some other categories, and also, if they win, if the Pacers win, it will overtake him in the standings, becoming the fourth seed, the Heat becoming the fifth seed, in case you didn't know. And I know Jimmy Butler is sitting out, but I remember the last time I had a sore foot, I iced it for a few days, and then I was good again. Well, not good. I was fine. I was healthy again. So, I don't understand. We're coming up on a week of him having this sore foot. It should be healed by now. And he should be healthy to play. So. Maybe it's just a very sore foot. I need to put very next to it. That way we really understand the extent of this sore foot. I mean... Like, sore, 
It just means you were overusing it a little, and you realize something uh, soon, and you prevented a more serious injury. And it should only last a few days if you treat it properly. And then you're good to go again. But I, I, I know if we beat the Heat, you guys are going to be like, you beat, you beat them without Butler, though. You beat them without Jimmy. We don't have Sabonis, first off. And second off, um, last time I checked, the Celtics against the Pacers chanted, you don't have Oladipo. After Oladipo uh, blew out his knee. So best believe, if we beat the Heat, I am chanting all day long, you don't have Jimmy. Because Jimmy has a sore foot, which will take little to no rehab whatsoever. Maybe, uh, not little to no. It'll take a little bit of rehab. Victor had a blown out knee, which takes a year to rehab. And nobody said anything. Nobody thought this was a little bit insensitive. So I'm chanting you don't have Jimmy. Because we don't have Sabonis. And Jimmy isn't hurt with this serious, terrible injury. He's hurt with a sore foot. Lasts about a week. We're coming up on over a week soon. Hopefully by Monday he plays. That way we can see Jimmy versus TJ. Jimmy score... You know, like 10 points. TJ put up like 50. Might be a bit off on both of those. Give or take a few for each. But if Jimmy does suck, TJ does do good. TJ might overtake him in points per game. And a few other things. Maybe some rebounds, maybe some assists, maybe some shooting percentages. Then, a few games in the bubble did, in fact, make him better than Jimmy. Despite popular belief. Obviously, people don't check stats. But maybe I just don't have a life, you know. I don't have a life for taking ten seconds to look up some stats. I, I've gotten that insult, too. You don't have a life for taking ten seconds to go on NBA.com and look at two guys' stats. Or go on Basketball Reference and compare two guys, which literally takes about three minutes. I will see you guys in the next video. Love on the shower, as in, like, you know, tell each other they love. I don't know, like, who the person is, so. The fuck you doing? The fuck you doing? Yes.